Well, Steve, you had asked a question in the recent uh, tech session that we wanted to record uh, for training purposes in um, the differences between a 500 millivolt per G-accelerometer, 100 millivolt per G-accelerometer, and low speed applications. So as we get into that, I wanted to share with you three different um, design considerations for piezoelectric accelerometers in CTC's design class. The first one here, we have an AC220 or AC240. This is a miniaturized industrial accelerometer. And if you could liken this to a sports car, like a Porsche or a Corvette or something you're gonna drive fast, this, this measures high frequencies. It's small, it's compact, it's designed for high, high speed performance, not low speed performance, uh, just like the sports cars. In the middle here, we have uh, our standard AC102-1A. It's our most popular accelerometer. We've sold hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these uh, at CTC. Um, liken that to a four-door sedan or a small SUV. It's something you're gonna see on the road every day. It's a very general purpose instrument um, that people would drive every day. This is a general purpose instrument you'd use every day. Uh, then the last sensor is a 500 millivolt per G accelerometer. Notice it's the same size case as the 100 millivolt per G. Maybe liken this to a pickup truck or something that you might use where you need more torque, you need to gear it down, you're gonna pull heavy weight, uh, do something other than running super high speed. Um, that's our low frequency accelerometer. So what's the difference? If you look inside these, the very small AC240, it's gonna have a very small seismic mass. So when you get back to our design considerations and inside the sensor, we're talking about the actual seismic mass now. The seismic mass inside this 100 millivolt per G miniature industrial accelerometer is small. It's gonna allow it uh, fundamentally to reach very high frequencies. The reason for this is that the resonant frequency is gonna be a much higher resonant frequency than the 500 millivolt per G on the far end. Now we operate within the resonance. You, if you go beyond resonance or at resonance, you're not gonna get accurate readings. You're gonna get readings, but they're not gonna be accurate. So we need to find the bandwidth before resonance where we can measure within. So this small industrial accelerometer is gonna do very high, very well at high frequency measurements. Next, going to our 100 millivolt per G accelerometer, notice it has a larger seismic mass than our AC240. This is reflective of our AC102-1A. Uh, this is gonna be a good general purpose instrument, like we talked about, a four-door sedan or a small SUV driving down the road. Good for every, a lot of general purpose things in life. That's exactly what this 100 millivolt per G accelerometer is good for. Uh, it's gonna have a nice high resonance, not as high as the AC240, um, but not as low as a low frequency accelerometer. So what is that gonna do for you? It's gonna give you a very good general purpose bandwidth. So you're gonna measure from uh, relatively low frequencies to relatively high frequencies, not extreme at either, of, at either end. Uh, next would be our low frequency accelerometer or our AC133 that, uh, series that Steve, you had asked about. Notice inside that you're gonna see a, a larger, physically larger seismic mass. So what is that gonna do? Well, when you, when you measure vibration, the seismic mass is what imparts a force on the piezoceramic. So the piezoceramic is, uh, by definition, piezos to stress or squeeze, electric to see how you're gonna get from it. So a piezoceramic inside a piezoelectric accelerometer is gonna give off a charge. If you put a larger mass on top of the ceramic, you're going to get a larger picocoulomb per G output. Um, that's gonna translate to a better signal to noise ratio. And at low frequencies, when you have lower amplitudes, you're going to get a better signal to noise ratio at low frequency vibration measurement monitoring.